All right, everybody. Let's get back into some dungeon crawl stone soup. Um, this is the second kind of like tutorial I'm playing through right now, and I am Bofine the Tortoise. We are on Snake Pits 2, experience level 15. We are Okawaru people. Um, and as you can see here, we've got some pretty incredible artifacts that our buddy um, Okawaru has given us. And then we just got these boots last night in the Orcish Mines too. And so it's time to... Uh, get into here we go make that a little bit zoom in a little bit the snake pits we're going to try to get our first rune um, in the snake pits and so let's step down and see what we can find alright so right away no enemies and a potion of haste terrific um, potion of haste is Provides combat ability and escape ability, so it's a, just an amazing potion to get. All right, we got a black mamba, which is not hard. Um, and then we've got a... This corridor here is extremely unfortunate, g given um, that he has range. And I really don't. I could throw javelins at him, but it, it would be a huge mistake. Um... Excuse me for one second while I just update my um, <laughs> Twitch information so people actually can see the right thing. Okay. Now, I'm going to step up here, and I need to just close the distance. Unfortunately, this has revealed a bunch of guys, a sharpshooter, a naga, and another naga. Now... This isn't too bad for me, but I'm going to go heroic anyway. Push A to bring up my ability screen, my god abilities. Um, and you can see here in my debuffs that I've been constricted by this Naga man. He's like wrapped his tail around me. Which um, is going to start doing damage, but primarily the problem is that it prevents me from running away. So I've got to kill him, and I was just able to kill him in one shot. Now, when I come around further, it opens into another area that is awful with more people. And there's also this alarm trap here. So anytime these jerks step on this alarm trap, it rings a bell or an alarm throughout the entire level of the dungeon. So everyone now knows where I am. So I'm going to actually step back. And it's really unfortunate to have to do that because every square, I'm still in the line of sight of these ranged people. But... As you can see, um, my necklace of, my amulet of reflection basically bounced all of those back. And then when he did hit me with his poison, it did no damage. Um, so I'm strong enough to where it's not the end of the world. Um, let's see, what's this, this Naga warrior all about? He's constricting me as well. Okay. Yeah, these guys are pretty okay right now for me um, as a melee person with a plus 11 war axe. Um, let's see if we can get this guy to come over here. I'm just pushing S until he wanders into my world. Okay. Another... No, it's not another one. It's the same one. I just came up a different passageway. The, I just want to get away from that alarm trap. I don't want anything to do with it. I'm going to step around this corner. And so soon enough, this guy will pop out here or here. Um, there he goes. And then we'll just close the distance and destroy him. So I'm pushing O to auto-explore as usual. And my good buddy O won't let me go once there's danger. It's like, hey, there's a black mamba nearby. That's one of the main reasons I love auto-explore. Besides the fact that... Um, I'm lazy. It looks for the best path to not only map out the area, but it'll stop when it sees anything dangerous and won't let you continue to move. So it really protects you from overlooking the fact that the enemy has come on the screen. It's kind of like what I was mentioning yesterday where there aren't sound effects. So like you don't notice sometimes that you've got a debuff or that an enemy's gone invisible if you're not paying attention. And it's very easily, um, I'm sure... Uh, 
Elhaz can uh, attest to that, which is that you can just get in the zone in this game and just kind of like be zoned out, just tooling around and not realize that something that's going to kill you has wandered onto the screen and whoops, your entire run is over. So, auto explore protects you from that. Oh yeah, exactly, right? Um, and that's a perfect point, which is like, you know, if you're using the, the arrow keys or the number pad to move around, you can go into a room in a way that does not afford you the best protection against line of sight and not realize it, whereas auto explore will instantly just kind of step your toe in the room and as soon as anybody can see you, it stops you. So I like that about it. Now, I did tweak my um, auto fight turn off to 80%. Um, I'm going to do a video about that. I'm playing offline. I, I primarily play offline, although some of the people um, on YouTube have been trying to sit, tell me to play online. Elhaz, you play online or, or offline? I, I'm one of those people, maybe I'm old-fashioned, um, but I play offline just because I don't want there to be a situation where, like, there's an in, the internet's down and I can't play my character. Um... Yeah, yeah, I, I hear about that tourney. Are you going to enter it? It seems cool. Um, I, I might try it. I've never entered one before, but it might be fun just to give it a whirl. All right, I'm waiting. Yeah, cool. Well, I'll see you there. I'll take a crack at it too, just to see what's going, you know, what's happening. Um, I've reached level 16, and I got some agility. Okay, well, not my favorite, but I am trying to mess around with um, evasion and see if that benefits me at all um, in terms of helping out my character. So I'm training dodging earlier than I normally do in a run like this. All right. Um, anyway. I went into the dungeon crawl um, like INIT file and moved up my auto fight from 50% stop to 80% stop. What the game does is um, it basically will not let you auto fight anymore by pushing tab once you get to that threshold. And 50% is a little bit too low. It used to be 30%, which is outrageous. Um, and, you know, it was almost useless at that point. But now you can protect yourself. You can also change it so that it won't let you hold down the tab key, that you have to take your finger off it for a set amount of time before you can push it again to even prevent you from accidentally holding down the key too much, um, which is another way to help you. Now, even though I'm using Auto Explorer, I've stepped into this situation where this Shock Snake, which is a newer addition to the game i say newer but like l has i've taken like a a year break so this guy could have been here for a long time i just didn't know this but um he's able to hit me from range and then this group of naga nightmares is down here sharpshooters people ready to just blow me away from range so i need to start scaling back immediately and get around this corner at the very least to protect myself I might actually go upstairs here if things get too rough. I'm going to go heroic, and I'm going to wait for this guy to get close to me and see if anybody else is coming along for the ride. Yeah, they are. Okay, so let's get up here. Ooh, he's casting. Hopefully they just have, like, generic buff spells for a ranged caster type and not summon or, you know, and again... If you're ever curious, like, you're like, what the hell does this character have in terms of his capabilities? Right-click on it. Here's a Naga Mage. So, um, he can haste his buddies, which is a problem. These bolt spells that he can cast, these poison bolts, I'm not worried about at all. Um, because I have resist poison and I have massive shield abilities plus an amulet of reflection. Mystic Blast is no good. But this teleport other could mess me up, although I've got most of this level mapped, so I'm not too 
concerned about it. Anyway, let's just get in range of this guy and take him down. Oh, there's two of them now, so I'm going to step back and just wait. They still poison me anyway. It's worth just mentioning again that even if you have full resist poison, which the game used to have different levels of resist poison, um, now it's just one. But you can still get poison. It does not prevent you from being poisonable. It just makes it harder. Now, this is... I, I've been trying to scum out the area first before I step in here. But, um... This level of the snake pits just happens to have four freaking shops for me. So this is a huge discovery, alright? So I've got, like, this giant stack of uh, evocable items. If you remember last play um, yesterday, I was talking about evocations. You could see I've turned on my evocations, and so now all of these things are really exciting. Um, this Wand of Disintegration, I'm definitely going to buy it. It'll identify Wands of Disintegration, um, but also Wand of Disintegration, if you have high evocations, can just blow things away. In my previous um, tutorial with my human, I had a wand of disintegration and high evocation, and I had to go into the spider's nest, and I was, um, just wrecking orb spiders in one shot with this, so I'm gonna get this, um, anything else that I need here, Fan of Gales is, is pretty decent evo evoking thing, um, Wand of Acid I really like, but I already have one with 14 charges, so I'll just come back if I need to buy this. I think right now I'm okay. Um, oh, let me ask everybody while you're here. Um, is the music too loud? It, like, I don't want it to uh, overpower, or is it too quiet, or is it fine? Um, just let me know if the levels are off. All right, so... Um, okay, cool, man. Thank you. I appreciate that. I, <laughs> sometimes it's like, you know... Steam Labs OBS attempts to give you a volume levels for all your audio tracks, but sometimes it's misleading. And then, like, I've gone back to the recording, and the music is way too loud, and it just sucks. So, anyway, great. Good to know. Okay. Um, well, then we'll keep it. So, we've got four shops. Um, we have a scroll shop, which is sick, because... Um, Again, you can buy scrolls that you didn't have identified. There's also a scroll of brand weapon here, and two, three identifies. Pretty much my standard operating procedure, if I ever get a scroll shop, I always buy every single identify scroll. You, It's very rare that you don't need one of these. It's like super late game that you don't need identify. And even then, it's always pretty nice. I'm going to buy this scroll of torment, just so I identify it, as well as this scroll of fear. And I'm going to buy all of the um, Identify Scrolls. Brand weapon is sweet, but I don't have a weapon right now that I need to brand, so I'll just keep it here. Remember, you can just leave stuff at the store, and then when you do your Control F to search later in the game, um, you can just type in brand weapon, and it'll tell you exactly where it is and give you a, an option to just path right to it. Or, if you want and you want to remember that you're trying to save money, if you look down here at the bottom of the shop window, it tells you that you can put stuff on your shopping list, okay? So, like, let's say I wanted to put this, you know, um, scroll of brand weapon on my shopping list, okay? What you do is you push, you take the letter that it corresponds to, and you just push the capital letter of that letter, and then it puts this dollar sign thing by it. Okay, to indicate that you're going to put it on your shopping list, but you have to confirm it by pushing enter and then I say yes I'm gonna buy these items, okay, and then I'm gonna leave the shop and then if I push shift um, Four to do the dollar sign uh, it shows you how much money I have and then it shows you your shopping list like and then you can actually just click on it to go to that location if you want um, so it's a really helpful resource to just keep things in mind because I don't know about you but I'm extremely forgetful um, and so I'd be playing dungeon crawl I would see something like you know in a shop and then two hours later I'd totally forget about it so that is one of those great quality of life improvements that protects me from me that I really appreciate okay here's a potion shop 
Man, these are really, really awesome shops and a weapon shop. This is killer. Um, I've identified all the potions, okay? At least all of the ones that are available here. So I'm gonna buy a potion of might. I'm gonna buy a potion of curing. Um, I'm gonna leave everything else. I've got plenty of invisibility potions and they're kind of expensive, so I'm just gonna buy these two things. Again, at a potion shop, I will every single time, if I have the money, I will buy heal wounds, cure wounds, might, haste, although haste is an expensive potion, but you can never have too many healing things as a melee person, especially since they took healing wands out of the game and I don't have a god that gives you any kind of healing. Okay, um, then let's just take a look in this weapon shop. Wow, look at this thing. That's a cool weapon. I've never really messed around with stabs too much. Um, but... That's cool. Everything else, meh. Not that great. But there is one thing to consider is there is a Morningstar here, which is a great one-handed mace in terms of base attack damage. And um, there was the Scroll of Brand Weapon. So if I was earlier and I didn't have a good weapon, I could consider buying both of those things and combining them to try to make something happen. But I don't need that right now. So I'm just going to leave. All right. And what I'm going to do is... Um, I'm going to finish exploring the level, okay? So there still are some people over here. Before I start blind reading um, this scroll, I'm going to drop this scroll of torment. I have no desire to use that. Okawaru, I don't believe would be happy if I did. He's a good god. That's an evil spell. Generally, gods will forgive you the first time you do something, um, if you do it on accident, like if you blind read a scroll of torment or something, a good guy will be like, hey, just this one time, I won't, you know, send my wrath upon you, but if you do it again, they will get pissed, and I don't want to lose piety. I, my piety is maxed out with Okawaru, as you can see, and I'd love to get another, you know, item from him, like a piece of jewelry would be so awesome right now an artifact ring yes please okay so um let's see i think i'm pretty happy with everything i've got i'm gonna identify these shoes and they are shoes of running fantastic okay that was the only reason i was keeping these boots was only if they were boots of running boots of running let me right click on it so you can see um they allow you to run at a great speed um, and cover all but the largest hooves and talons. So even though I have hooves, I can still wear these things. Um, and you can use this to run away. You can actually use this to escape with the Orb of Zot if you're looking to do that, like because it will let you cover a whole bunch of squares. What I used to do is just keep Wands of Haste and um, or Potions of Haste and just off those, use those, and then run, run, run um, to get out. But you can use boots of running for really sneaky things, like um, getting to an item or getting to a staircase. There could even be a situation where you need to swap them out while you're getting attacked and then run away. So I'm going to hold on to those. Alright, let's keep exploring. Alright. Nope. Alright. The Neglectful Guardian. Okay, I'm going to step around um, and limit his line of sight. I am going to... Well, I'm going to wait one, two, and then I'm going to go heroic until he gets up on me and just butcher this guy. Again, the Snake Pits, they can be tough, but generally, once you get any kind of resist poison... Um, you are okay to go into the snake pits, in my opinion, if you can get to the depths. If you can clear down the dungeon 15, you could probably stick your head in here and see what's going on. Now, if you can't take out basic Naga, that's like an indication immediately. Man, another shop. Look at this place. Um, great sword of slicing. That would be cool if I was going two-handed sword. I am not. But anyway... Um, 
I clear the Orcish Mines first. If I bring up my list of branches that I've discovered. So I cleared the Orcish Mines already. Um, I cleared the layer. The layer does not contain a rune, but it contains sub-branches that do contain runes. Like what I'm in right now, the Snake Pit. Um, I'm not going into the Slime Pits until much, much later. The Elven Halls, I could do the first floor. The Vaults, I could probably do the first floor, being careful. And the Depths, I could maybe clear out the area around the staircase if I wanted, but I'm not in a hurry to go there right now. I'm going to try to get this Snake Rune first. I can't even go into the Vaults unless I have a Rune, so might as well get a Rune. Alright, let's go down and see what happens. Okay, so this is a great staircase area. This corridor is perfect for a melee person. I can um, get out of line of sight and I can limit the amount of enemies that I fight with superior positioning. Um, so I'm just going to wait and bring these guys in here. And I'm just going to um, tab and murder all of those guys. It's too bad I can't eat them, but you can't have everything. Alright, so here's a Anaconda that we have to worry about with the constriction, but we took him down. Here's a Black Mamba, which is not hard, but still. One of the things that can F you up in this game is if you see an enemy that's not hard, and you think, oh, you suck, I'll just destroy you, and you tab or walk towards them to kill them, do not be lured by the bait, you know, um, they're bait. And you can just walk in and turn something that should have been an easy situation into a much harder situation or a you're dead situation. Now look at this. This sh sharpshooter has been getting obliterated by my um, deflection uh, amulet. He's been getting hit by his own arrows. That's why his life is so far down. Anyway, I'm just going to chop these guys up. Rest up by pushing five and chop up. Okay, bunch of snakes. So whenever I see something like this, even though, you know, Ball Python is a joke, you can find this on one of the earliest levels, like Dungeon 1 through 3, you can find this guy. Um, but again, never underestimate this game or you will die. I'm just going to back into this hallway and take these guys down. Oh, Mana Viper. Okay, so this would probably be a bitch if you were a spellcaster, but I don't really care about my mana. I need 2 MP to use heroism and 5 MP for finesse, so I don't care, but I am going to just right-click on this guy just to see what he's on about. Um, he does look dangerous. Um, he drains magic, okay, with his bites. Alright, well, that's actually not a bad... That's fine. I don't care about that. And I got him in one shot. I, I uh... Ooh, I sliced him and headbutted him. That's a glorious thing to see. Okay. So, ooh. Whoa, look at this. Okawaro just gave me an artifact double sword. It's a crystal double sword. Jesus. So, double swords are, if memory serves, the best one-handed swords you can get in terms of base damage. So, let's just take a look at this thing and see what it's all about. Um... Oh, I don't know. I have to identify it. I was thinking, like, because it's a god gift. Uh, no. All right, I'm going to use my scroll then and see what it's all about. Um, wow. Plus seven double sword of fortitude. It does electric damage, gives you resist negative energy, and it gives you magic resistance. That's actually really, really, really good. Um, let me look at its damage again. It's base damage 14. Um, and allows you to do the sword special, which is repost. Okay. But, um, unfortunately, I got, I mean, fortunately for me, but unfortunately for that sword, I got this war axe. Um, it's a plus 11 war axe. Now, notice its base damage is much lower because it's an axe, and axes inherently, um, have lower base damage than other melee weapon counterparts because they hit more than one target. And so, in exchange for that ability, they... They do less single target damage, but still. This thing gives, has chopping, which means it just does extra damage. Resist poison, resist fire, and its stealth is not important at all. But anyway, this is a really, really good item, but it doesn't surpass what I've got. Especially considering I'm not leveling swords, 
So I would have to um, turn swords on and go from level zero. And that's just not really practical right now. I could do that, but I'm not going to. Let's just chop these guys up. Um, annoying electrical man. But I can eat the shock snake at least. All right, let's see. Let's see what we got. All right, that was a hold down tab and murder. Feeling good. I love murdering with the tab hold. And I, as I was telling um, Elhaz before, uh, I did go into the uh, INIT file and change my auto battle stop so that I feel safer about using it. If I have 80% or less hit points, I will not be able to auto battle anymore. It won't let me. So that protects me from just accidentally being too greedy with it. Your mileage may vary on what that sweet spot is for you. To be honest, I... Oh, okay. We're getting really close to the rune. Um, I couldn't recall exactly how many floors were in the snake pit. But when you see, generally, um, this many enemies and then like a stone chamber or any kind of chamber that is different material than the walls normally are and then a big concentration of enemies, that is a very good indication that you are getting close to um, the treasure stash or the, the uh, rune that's on this level. All right, so let's chop. And, okay, let's go back here and rest, and let's just blow these guys away. All right, so let's rest. What is this guy? He's a guardian serpent. Yeah, he's he's guarding that rune. Okay. Oh, okay, we got people coming from all sides here. All right, let's rest. Okay, yeah, they're all coming out. They all know I'm here. Um, Uh-oh. Did you do anything to me? No. All right. Yeah, there's a big mass here. I'm going to go around the corner, and I'm going to wait. And as soon as I see somebody, I'm going to go... Um... Oh, okay, cool, Elhaz. Thank you for... Heads up, everybody. Yeah, um, this is the final floor. So, yeah, I got to be very, very careful. That's why um, I never rush in. And like anything in Crawl, I learned that the hard way many, many times before it got through my thick skull and scared me gave me night terrors and put me in a position to never charge into an area where there is treasure or a rune um, and just lure guys out in slow trickles so I can control what's going on. So I'm going to push S and as soon as I see a guy, um, I'm going to go heroic and then I'll take this guy out and then you know all of these guys are going to be here. Now, it's very tempting to wander up here to hit this guy, but again, let's just go back and wait and kill this guy. See, look, okay. The Naga Mage came around the corner, and I really don't want to give him a prime position to cast spells at me from far away. I gotta close the Naga Mage and kill him. Um, there's an Anaconda that just appeared here. Whoa! So, Okawaru is really happy, and he just gave me um, some artifact animal hide. Hilarious. I will not use it under any circumstance, but, um... Oh, I could eat you? Cool. Those guys have shouted so many times that everybody knows I'm here. Uh, the jig is up. So they're all coming at me. Let me ch check out this, uh, animal hide. It's hilarious. Steaming animal skin. Yeah, it sounds like something I want to put on right away. Um, alright. Uh, a Naga warrior is nearby. Yes, he is. Let's kill him. Okay. Hey, look. Cool. My evasion has jumped up to 12 as I've been leveling up my um, dodging. Fantastic. All right. Um, there's still guys in here. I mean, like, look how much blood and carnage is littering this hallway. And yet there's still guys to kill, which is why you just go be very, very patient and lure them out one at a time or in small groups so that you don't get over your skis and end your run. You know, even at this point, I might think, oh, they've got to be all dead. I'll just go kill this, um, you know, Nagaraha, um, and I die. So I'm going to wait 
and bring this Nagaraha down here and hey hit me with an orb of energy thanks a lot okay I'm poisoned I'm gonna wait for that to wear off and then I'm gonna just wait for this and see yep there's still more people so get out of there kill the constricting guy chop him up so we can eat him all right let's just throw a javelin at that guy for fun and then blast this guardian spirit man I don't know what it is. They must have toned down. I feel like Guardian Spirits used to be a lot more challenging. These are crappy. Maybe I'm just overpowered for this point, you know, um, and they would be posing much more of a threat. That's just a general rule of thumb that you all want to follow in this game, which is that if you can't avoid it, whenever a branch or sub-branch of the dungeon you're in starts to feel like it's too much for you, Abandon ship and go somewhere else where you can do better. There's no reason to force anything. Now, there's many times when you get into a situation where you can go nowhere else and you have to just risk it, but until that moment is there, look, even now, more guys. Um, ooh, what happened here? So, these guys all blinked into view. I don't know if they have some kind of ability like the um, the Vault Sentinels or whatever the guys in the Vault are that can like bring the, the Convoker maybe, that can bring more guys from the level around you, or if they have some kind of mass teleport, or what did that? But anyway, I'm going to go Heroic. Unfortunately for them, I have an Axe, and so they're all just going to get hit. Remember, you swing your axe in a 360-degree arc around you. Um, <laughs> which, in situations where you can't get favorable positioning, you can exploit that. I probably downplay how strong that ability is with an axe because um, my method of play is to not put myself in a situation to maximize the, the potential of the axe but I think that keeps you alive and just you kind of want to use that feature of the axe as a nice perk um, and it will come in handy and save your life also but you don't want to go around trying um, to make that happen you want to use it more as a fallback look at this guys just continue to pour out of here that must have been just tiles deep I'm going to step around here and here, and then go here. I'm gonna keep waiting until anybody comes up. Okay, I'm gonna go heroic because I know there's some more mages here, and I wanna just um, kill these mages as fast as possible before any shenanigans happen. I don't want one of them to teleport me. Okay, so I am running in now. Um, and look, let's watch everybody as an ax happens. All right, swing the ax. Um, swing the axe, swing the axe, swing the axe, swing the axe, and they're all dead. Okay. That was still pretty risky. That was still pretty dumb play. Um, I just felt like there was probably enough of those guys dead. Um, but that could have gone really, really badly for me. So that was the unnecessary risk to take there. All right. There's the Serpentine Rune of Zot. Everybody, there it is. We got our first rune of the run. Let's tap dance and celebrate. Okay, so let's kill all these straggling snakes, continue exploring. Wow, there were a bunch of good guys over here. Let's back up into this hallway, get heroic, and chop them. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Hey! Man. There's a bunch of boss enemies down here. What is going on? What are you guys doing? Why were you in the uh, the rune hole, huh? All right, anyway. That was an obliteration. Now, Okawaru did just give me a hat right there, which is really, really cool. Um, but I doubt that it's going to be better than my current hat. Um, but we'll check it out anyway, because I have an artifact hat. And it's made of duck teeth. I'm too hungry to rest. Ooh, I'm starving. I didn't even notice that. All right, let's rest. Let's rest. Let's eat. Okay. Um, I'll identify this hat. Magic resistance. 
that's actually not bad. It's really cool to get a property like that um, on a hat. But um, I need all of these things. I need, um, you know, the duck's teeth hat that I have on here is plus one. It has re resist electric, resist poison, and resist negative energy. And it contaminates me if I take it off. So I really don't want to take it off. Um, so anyway, nice hat. Not going to use it. I'm going to drop it. I'm also going to drop this double sword. I can do that uh, without fear of reprisal because I believe they took out the thing in the game where enemies could just um, pick up weapons that were left around and use them against you. And so I don't want any enemy... Oh, okay. Thanks, Elhaz. Okay, so Elhaz is reminding me that um, when you're near the treasure room, they can group blink. Because I saw that one guy blinked, and that explained one person being there but not a bunch okay that's that's cool that makes sense so even in that sense the game is like trying to make it hard for you to draw enemies out of the treasure room or the the room chamber because they can group blink all right so we have that explored and we have let's see what these scrolls are random uselessness okay let's get rid of those um Okay, I'm satisfied with my inventory. Um, and we are done with the snake pit. What I like to do sometimes when I get done with a branch, I just take a look at my skills and my inventory and just kind of do a little checking in with myself and my housekeeping um, to see if I like what I'm doing. It's getting a lot harder to train dodging, but, you know, there's a question of if I want to turn it off at this point and and wait and just yeah i'm gonna turn it off i'm happy with where it's at um and i'm going to just level up i really need to get my maces and flail I'm, I'm sorry my axes my armor and my shields maxed so let's go back to that i'm still training evocations by the way just so i can blast people with wands if i need it having a little bit of range and utility is absolutely vital uh and Okuwaru gives me no range at all. So, anyway, I'm going to push Shift-G. And where do I want to go? I'm going to go to the Elven Halls uh, for now. There's no rune here, but I'm just going to scum some experience and see if I can get some jewelry. I feel like I'll do pretty well in the elven halls because I'm so good with the shield. This is a really crappy starting room. Look at this disaster. There's just um, elven mages for days far away from me. I'm going to wait. I'm going to use he heroism, first of all, so I can block better. Ugh, negative energy bolts. I'm just going to keep pushing S until I can get somebody to come up the steps with me. Now, these are elven mages, so they have summoned, but remember, when you stair dance, um the summons don't come up the steps with you and that i there was only one mage there so i was able to get him now i'm gonna go back down and i'm gonna wait and i'll just pull him up i'm gonna take one mage at a time this is such a bad and if there's only one entrance to the elven halls it's my only option is to go down here no i have to wait i have to wait and i gotta go up oh geez heck i got a good hit on me Let's just rest. Okay. And let's wait and bring this guy up. Okay. We're... Oh, I got marked. Let's wait for that to wear off. Um, all right. So this dude down here, this deep elf knight, has just been having a field day on me with his arrows. Um, but let's go kill him. All right. What are you casting at me? Man, a lot of electricity. I don't like that at all. Okay. So... I'm going to chop up these guys. It's nice. At least I can eat them, unlike the snakes. The naga I could not eat. Um, all right. So I got a potion of heal wounds, which is immense. It's very rare that I have a stack of 11 cure, I mean, heal wound potions. That's just so amazing. Oh, here's some dancing weapons. Um, it just, everything right now bespeaks, or I'm sorry, not B speaks, but rather speaks to the power of Minotaur Fighter. Minotaur is just so strong. If you're new to this game and you're looking to just give yourself something that's easier to play, 
do what I'm doing in this build. Go Minotaur. You don't have to go Fighter. You can go Berserker. That's totally fine if you want to have Trog out of the gate. But Minotaur is just so strong. His only minus is really that he's loud and he can't wear hats. I mean, helmets. And that's not that big of a deal. He also is bad at casting spells, but it's so much simpler in this game to just start out with melee because it's, it, in my opinion, it's a lot easier to play. Anyway, um, we're doing well. Oh, but that's a deep elf demonologist. A demonologist is a prick because he can summon things. I'm going to actually hide over here. Yeah, he's summoning something that's quite difficult. Um, a executioner so i'm gonna go back down i'm gonna hit him so remember when you kill the summoner all of his summons disappear so i'm just gonna chop up the summoner but you have to be also very careful because look what happened to me earlier where i got this permanent debuff of deterioration from a summoned creature um so summoned guys like Yes, you can get rid of them by killing the caster, but that doesn't mean they can't get off their annoying abilities. So, be very wary. Now, I was talking about dancing weapons like these. Dancing weapons can hit really hard. I mean, they're just pure weapons, but what's cool about them is once you kill them, they drop and you can pick them up. Ooh, great. I got a wand of digging. A wand of digging is a escape tool that you can use um, on many walls in the dungeon and what you can do is either make a shortcut for yourself like if I needed to run I could blast this wall and run out here although I am not sure if I can blast um, the walls here many walls in, in deeper dungeons you can't um, dig through let's see if it if it'll tell me here if I can um, unworked rock and so these walls look like they have been worked so i'm gonna just for the sake of this my education and this tutorial your education i'm going to try to dig through this wall um okay cool you can dig through it all right so this is what happens when you blast with the wand of digging um it goes as far as its range through whatever it can and you might say, well, this is going to go nowhere. Why the hell would you do this? Well, for a variety of reasons. First of all, it might very well find a hidden chamber. You can use it as a shortcut. But most often what I use Wand of Digging for is to create a opportunity to make a small hallway for myself that I can back into that limits the amount of enemies that I'm fighting as well as hides me from line of sight from ranged attackers. So you can use this um, to save your ass. Ooh, a lightning rod. Yes. Okay, lightning rod is an excellent evocable item. And um, if you recall, I am training evocations. I've got it up to seven now. Um, and this is an item that has four charges and it gets stronger as you use it. Lightning is awesome because it goes in the line and it goes through everything in that line. And then it can bounce off walls and stuff. Now, once you use all four of these charges, you have to get some experience before it recharges, but it doesn't use any MP. So these evoking items are really, really, really good. Um, and I happen to have two of them that are strong. Some of them aren't that great, but you know, I've got the Lamp of Fire and the um, Lightning Rod are good. Okay, so we've got a Mage and a Flame Man. Um, let's just get rid of them and the thing that's I'm only mm, there's a pig oh it's a shapeshifter well you you picked the wrong shape like you could have shapeshifted into so many dangerous things and you chose pig anyway um yeah see this is what's annoying about these guys these deep elf mages look at that he did 30 damage to me something sapped my intelligence by the way um so I'm gonna have to work to get that back online remember I've been raising intelligence with my chosen stat point so that I that something like this doesn't uh, ruin me quite as much. I want to mitigate that. I and luckily the artifact boots that I got last night give plus four intelligence, so that further protects me. Anyway, these deep elf mages can get some big ass hits on you, 
Um, they're paper tigers, so if you get on them, you ruin them. But the problem is, there's so many scenarios in this place where you can get into a spot where, like, they can hit you with a bunch of spells. Like, they're all casting Crystal Spear at you. Okay, this is getting out of hand, so let me look for a good place to hide. I don't have one right now, but this guy went invisible, and he's up on me, and this guy's almost dead. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold control um, just to keep myself standing in place. I wouldn't move anyway, but it's just, you know, best practice. I'm going to hold control and swing down, okay? And what happens is I killed the guy below me, but hopefully I'm also hitting um, the invisible guy. I'm certainly hitting the guy behind me, as you can see. Yeah, I got the invisible guy, and I can tell that because it said, let me click on this for you to bring up the text window. You can see whenever it says reactivating auto pickup and Okawaru accepts the kill that I have indeed killed something. So the guy that went invisible is dead, and that's just the, the brute power of an axe. If it got really annoying, unseen horrors are particularly annoying because they blink around, so they're hard to track. I do have a ring of sea invisible that I can wear if I had to, but most of the time with an axe, I'm good. All right, so here's a, you know, best practice situation. It's a named enemy. It's Agnes. Um, she's a Spriggan. She's dangerous. Spriggans are just generally annoying because they, um, they evade quite heavily. Uh, underestimate her at your peril. Yep. So she can hit for 30 plus her plus two vampiric um, Lodge Tang. Okay, so that's awful. Um, so I need to be very aware of that. And what I'm going to do is there's also a Deep Elf Knight here. Now, Agnes doesn't see me. So maybe she won't come into the party just yet. I'm going to step around here and just kind of hide myself here for the moment. And I'm going to wait, pushing S. I'll go heroic just in case Agnes comes in, but she didn't. Um, and I'll just heal back up and wander around until... Oh, there's Francis, too. Crap. Um, so Francis is the Duchess of Pandemonium. And again, best practice. If you're new to the game, or even if you're not, if you're like me and Elhaz and you've taken a break and you need a refresher on just exactly what one of these name guys does, click on them. Look right here for the evaluation of its strength relative to your own. It's dangerous, which is better than extremely dangerous, all right? Now, this is... She's a Chaos Knight or whatever. She's a, an Abyss Knight, Abyssal Knight. Um, or no, not the Abyss. From She's from Pandemonium. Okay, that's another nightmarish endgame dungeon. But anyway... Um, what can she do? She can throw Icicle. She can summon, which sucks. And she can Iron Shot, which can do a bunch of damage. And she has a Battle Axe, okay? So, the main thing is, I can probably take her no problem. But I don't want her to have range, and I don't want Agnes to also come in. Which she looks like she wants to. So, I'm going to step back to my little corner here. Now, it's not perfect, because as you can see, there's visibility here, and I could get flanked. But I'll just, you know, wait until somebody comes in. Who's gonna come in? I'm waiting, I'm waiting. Did nobody, yeah, nobody saw me. You can see the question marks here. They didn't even see me, so I need to kind of get one of them at a time to come fight me. Where are you? Okay, you're, you'll see me, so you come over here at least, right? Yeah, hello. My intelligence is back. Um, I really, really, really need a large shield. Haven't found one yet. Let's throw the javelins at this guy just for fun to bring him over here and crush him. Okay. All right, there's Francis, and now there's no question mark. The question mark indicates they haven't, they're not aware of your presence. She's aware of my presence, and I'm in a really junk spot. I'm going to step here, hope she doesn't iron shot me or anything like that, and I will... What's my resist negative energy like? Um... It's one. Okay, that's good enough um, for now, I suppose. I'm going to just wait until we see the Duchess. And then there she is. I'm going to go heroic, and I'm going to fight her. She started summoning stuff, but thank God it's behind her. Um, so they couldn't get in the way of us fighting. Couldn't interrupt our duel. All right, there's Agnes. And come on, Agnes. Let's just fight you and me. 
All right, you're all fast. I'm going to be fast, too. I'm going to use my finesse ability. And if I can... I mean, Agnes has no real armor. She just dodges really well. So as long as I can land a hit, she's going to get rocked. And she's dead. All right, so that's both named people. And we didn't even get drained with the vampiric weapon. Oh, hello. I'm going to kill you while I'm still heroic and finessed. And I'll just wait here, restore, and keep auto-exploring. Um... Ooh, did you see that? Let me, let me go back. I did that pretty fast, but... Um, so, the Deep Elf Mage pointed at me and casted um, an orb of energy, and then it bounced off my invisible shield and went back and hit the Elf Mage and exploded. <laughs> so, almost killed by our own or his own spell there. Love it. If you're going shield, which I pretty much always go... Um, Reflecting is such a nice thing to have. I mean, first of all, it's a plus four amulet of reflection, so that just gives me plus four shield skill, which is insane. But it also just gives you that ability. Scroll of Identify, great. Nothing I need to really identify, but I will drop this amnesia scroll. I don't need that at all. Just looking around, looking around at my inventory, and here we go. Auto explorer. Let's blast this guy. Ooh, Okawaru gave me some nice plate mail. Thank you very much. But before, Okawaru gave me this plus two crystal plate mail. So there's no way I would ever wear plate mail over um, crystal plate mail. That plate mail could be plus ten. If it was an artifact, maybe I would consider it if it had some insane brands. But um, the thing is, and I'm just fighting summoned creatures. Um, because I don't care right now. Um, but normally I don't really enjoy doing that. I'm going to pick up this gold and let this guy kill himself. Please, sir. Yeah, keep shooting yourself. See what happens. I'm just going to wait. I'm just waiting. Oh, fine. I'll go kill him. It was just fun watching that happen. Um, okay. Yep, 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 yep. By the way, everybody, if you have any questions for me, um, please feel free to ask. I'm not a um, expert by any means at this game, but, you know, me or uh, Elhaz will probably have a good answer for you. Now, this is a triple sword here, right? It's a plus eight triple sword. Triple swords are... Um, two-handed swords and their damage output is insane let me just right click on this to show you okay this has base damage um oh no it won't tell me because it's a it's a singing or dancing weapon right now anyway tri triple swords are great if you want to go two-handed i never go two-handed um it's trapped in here but if you were two-handed and you wanted it you can use um certain items to blow away this metal i could use my now, my digging wouldn't probably go through this, but you can... I think my disintegration, at least it used to go through one of these types. So you can do stuff to try to break out this thing out of its prison, but you do so at your own peril. Because a plus eight triple sword fighting you is really, really hard. I mean, it says this looks dangerous to me. It has huge armor just because it's a thing of metal. It dodges well. It, does, it has infinity for its magic resistance, meaning you can't enchant it at all. Um... And it's just a plus eight badass weapon. So I'm going to leave it trapped in there. And everybody, that is the end of Elven Halls 1. So let's dip our toe into Elven Halls 2. Remember, Elven Halls do not have a rune, but they have a fat treasure pile. I don't think I can get it just yet because Elven Halls 2 and the treasure vault that they have is one of the hardest places in the game. Um... You know what? Even just telling myself that means that I don't really want to go there right now. Um, I don't even want to risk it. There's a bunch of guys in there that can summon. There's yellow cloaked elves and black cloaked elves that are s purple cloaked elves that are so difficult. Um, and they're in mass. So you just, you know. Elven Halls. Elven Halls used to go three levels deep. And that's where their treasure vault was. Um, and that was like. I would have like 10 runes. Well, maybe not 10, but I would have a bunch of runes and I'd be super strong and I could easily just escape and win the game and I would be debating, should I go in there? That's kind of how hard it used to be. 
Um, and it, it still is very, very difficult. So I'm going to go someplace else. So what do you guys think? Um, my options are the vaults, the depths. I'm not going to the slime pits right now. I don't really want to go to the shoals right now. Um, although, well... Maybe I could shoals. The reason um, I don't want to go to the shoals is I don't want to drown. I don't want to be lured out into the water. Um, my magic resistance isn't great. It's 3 out of 5. It's fine. Um, but I do have some um, items of flying. I think I can actually even evoke flying from one of my gear pieces. Let me just look at that. Um, I can't see here because everything's all truncated. Let me look at my items individually. Um, it's not my crystal plate. Um, it's not those boots. It's not my hat. Well, anyway, I have a bunch of potions of flight that I can use. You need to fly in the shoals so that you don't drown. You don't want to fall in the water and... and that's why the sh it, if you're a gargoyle, the shoals are, like, not a problem. So, uh, I don't really want to do that. Um, I'll tell you what. I'll check out the first floor of the vaults. The vaults are really hard, and vaults 2 is actually where I died with my last run. So, um, there's that. But that was me being stupid, and I'm going to be sharper this time, I assure you. So, let me just resume going to the vaults um i'm already there um no shift g vaults one let's go okay here we go so let's open it up and see what's down here wow welcome to the vaults okay here's what we need to do when you go into the vaults all right and you see a bunch of enemies like this if you see Somebody like this, okay, he will take damage. Um, oop, let me zoom out so you can read this better. He will take the damage from the people around him, so he makes everything harder. Um, the Vault Warden, this is the one that you want to look out for in this case. He can seal the staircase so that I can't leave. So I need to leave immediately so that uh, I don't get sealed in there. And I need to know that he's there. And so because of that, I'm going to eat and prepare for going down there. Um, I'm just going to go heroic for now. And I'm going to go down, and I'm going to stair dance, and I'm taking everybody up with me, which sucks, but this way, um, nobody can pile on, okay? And I'm going to start swinging at the preserver um, so that he can't accept anybody's hit points, and we just destroyed as many people as we could. Now, my buddy, um, Fading at the Edges, uh, was watching the VOD from yesterday on Twitch. Uh-oh. I'm terrified of the glowing brain. Okay, luckily he didn't drain my intelligence. And there's a treasure vault, or um, a treasure trove, I should say, earlier that we encountered, and it requires a um, set of fire dragon scales that's plus four so vaults might have some fire dragon scales for us um and we could potentially open up that trove troves are always worth your time they usually have really really steep requirements um now i've just backed myself into this room for safety but i'm realizing that it only has one way in and out so we'd better win let's go heroic against this troll trolls are usually not bad except these guys are really bad um and let me show you why okay so this um some of his spells can mess you up so much of what i do and what i recommend others do is to pay attention to your positioning first and foremost um if you're a melee person if you're a caster it's or a ranged attacker it's important as well but um anyway because this guy can dig and then use Lee's rapid deconstruction to, like, um, 
blow up the wall. What that means is like you could feel like you're in a safe spot and then he could open up another way into that that could cause you to get surrounded in a way that you didn't anticipate. So anybody who can mess up my um, strategy like that is annoying. Uh-oh. Okay, so this guy, we got to get away from this guy immediately because um, he has this word of recall, all right, um, which summons a whole bunch of people from other places in the vaults to him, and he also buffs his enemies. So he did his word of recall, and he got all these guys here. I'm going to go heroic, and I'm going to back around this corridor here. I am going to try to fight these guys. I think I'm okay. I'll put myself here just to limit line of sight. He, he can come in, but they're buffed, which is just annoying. I'm going to use my axe to my advantage here um, because closing on the Yaktar is fine given that he um, might have a ranged weapon he wanted to shoot anyway. All right, let's step back and let's let this um, Vault Warden come in. And he's going to be trying to steal my escape. And all right, so... It looks like, and this is one of the things you want to develop in Dungeon Crawl, and you develop it through years of practice and through years of dying. Um, oh, great. Very fun. Um, a bunch of recall has just happened here, so I need to, you know, kind of uh, reevaluate. Ooh, I'm level 18. All right, and I've been marked, okay? This is a good time to leave the vaults and just wait until the mark wears off. The mark tells everybody on a level, I'm here and where I am. Um... And so everybody's heading towards this place now. Now I'm going to put this into intelligence still. And I think at this point now I can start moving back into strength. Um, I'm looking at what's on the screen here to make my decision about what I do. And what I mean is I can stare dance this vault guard up very easily. But I want to be greedy and try to get another guy. But um, this dude can seal the staircase. So I need to just go up now while I still can and blast this guy away. And I'm just going to wait until the mark wears off. It's gone. I'm going to put on um, my heroism and step down because, yep, enemies are here. And the um, either this guy or this guy has already used his ability to lock the door. So I'm going to use finesse because this is a bad spot. And I need to start killing guys really quickly to get out. Okay, so it wasn't this guy, it was this guy. So we gotta kill him, kill him, and step in here to kill him. Okay, good, okay. And kill all these guys, okay. So what I was saying about feel is, I feel right now that this is a very doable branch for me, at least vaults one. I melee, melee, at least in my experience, generally tends to thrive here. The bottom couple of floors can be brutal. Um, they have dragons and harder enemies that can do things that you don't want to deal with. But for the most part, if it's just these guys who are trying to come in and fight me at rain, you know, uh, up close, um, I'm beyond okay with that. Like that's how I want to fight. Okay, we got a cyclops. Let's just wait for the Cyclops to kill himself with his rocks. He hasn't yet. He ran out of rocks, and we kill him. Oh, okay. Now, um, the Stone Giant is a little bit better at throwing rocks, I feel like, than the Cyclops. So um, I'm going to back up. Again, I don't want anybody else, and this guy's going to keep hitting me at range until he runs out of his rocks. Ooh, he almost killed himself. That's sweet. Um, huh, look at this place. There's all these guys surrounded and protected. Interesting. Okay, I'm going to kill this guy before he does his thing. Um, a book of debilitation. It's grayed out because I am worshiping a good god. And so Okawaru doesn't want me learning any of those spells. All right, let's go down here and fight this guy. Okay, let's rest up right here. This, is a gen this feels okay. And I'm kind of relaxing a, f a little bit of my cautionary standards right now, only because I'm feeling good. If I felt like this was a much harder situation for me, I would be 
not doing what I'm doing. I would be using all of my traditional methods of, um, okay, an amulet of harm, get away from me, of insulating myself against danger, but I can just be a little bit more carefree, but only a hair, um, because things can still, this is, again, I have to stop myself, I have to take a breath. The number one killer in Dungeon Crawl Stone Soup is overconfidence. Now, when you first start out, the number one killer is just lack of information. You have no idea how hard the game is, what the hell things are doing, um, and so you need a little bit of experience. But once you pass, like, I feel like there's a point of critical mass that you get to with your characters where you're like, okay, this is going to be a legitimate run. Like, I'm going to make a real shot at it this time. And what I mean is... I feel like I'm an experienced player, but still, um, you can die early game to just complete trash that you couldn't do much about, you know? Like, Sigmund can just hit you really hard, or an ogre can just hit you really hard, and it's over, you know? There's such high variance then, but you get to a point of critical mass where you, because of your gear and your experience and your knowledge of the game you have mitigated the variance to a very high degree and you can just actually strap in and start to get going. And so once you, I get to that point, I start being very careful and taking things really seriously because um, it's, you know, just tedious to play through those first floors of the game if you've played through those first floors of the game, you know, hundreds of times okay okay uh, big old great mace of protection great mace of draining yep just ogre heaven here all right oh okay here's a um, fire dragon great come on man drop me some scales i'll take some plus four scales you got any nope you got nothing that's sad uh-oh look at that what was that? Oh, no. I fell through a shaft. Okay. All right. Well, this is what I get. So, again, um, this game, even if you are prepared, it still has variance. Okay? I fe Luckily, this shaft that I fell through was only one floor. Um, but now I don't know where the staircase up is. So, I'm going to use a scroll of magical mapping right away. Um... And what's sweet about magical mapping, uh, you can see, like, now everything that I haven't been to is blue, but I know where it is because of my magic map. This is a staircase. This is a staircase. Um, and so, uh, a staircase up, I should say. And I want to head for staircase. I want to get the hell out of here. I, I, I don't want to be on this floor right now without a way out. So, in my opinion, this looks like... Well... Hmm. It's a really tough call which one to go to. This one feels... I mean, they look equidistant. I don't like this one at... No, I'm going to go for this one. I don't like the, the fact that it opens into this big area here. Um, because there could be nasty surprises. But something about this... Well, there's still an open area up here that I don't know what's going on. So... Either way, I'm getting it. I like the idea of moving along this corridor and then skipping over here. So I'm going to have to fight these um, whites, or these skeletal warriors, I'm sorry. But they shouldn't really be too difficult. Oh, oh, okay. Wait a minute. What is going on here? I was just holding down tab, and I found Jory the Bloodstained Count. Okay, so... Um... First things first, let me heal, let me get finesse, and let me blow this guy away with just regular attacks. Um, ooh, cool, Okawaru gave me some awesome gloves. Um, I just have regular, like, plus zero gloves, I think, so that's great. Um, so that was a... I'm not sure my auto fight was working the way I wanted it to. It was supposed to stop at 80%. Did it do that? Um... Oh, no, it did do that. It's just that he hit me with a plus three greatsword and um, did 
a shit ton of damage to me. Okay, fair enough. Um, all right. So what do I want to do? I want to go up here to this Rakasha and take it out um, because they're quite annoying. And that's just a lesson in threat assessment. Sometimes, um, no, I don't want to move into that cloud. Let's get these gloves and we need a place to rest. This room, it only has one door into it and there's nobody in here. So let's just stand here and rest. We're not moving around until we get some more hit points, okay? Um, one of the things that you need to know about the game and you learn it through experience is just like, okay, I'm in a shitty situation. There's enemies everywhere. Which enemy has to die first? Like, what's the biggest threat that's being posed to me right now? What can I take out first? Um, and, and what will give me the most chance of living? Um, do I need to just run away? Can I take something out? Can I, you know, what can I do here? And sometimes I might just, I'm trying to talk my way through everything, but sometimes I forget to do that. So if there's ever a point when you have a question about a choice that I've made or I don't explain something fully enough, please just ask me and I will um, do my best to overwhelm you with too much talking. But anyway, um, Rakashas, in my experience, they multiply, they blink around, and they're just really annoying. Uh, they can get other enemies into the fight, they can stay alive a long time, and... Um, I don't like uh, having him alive, so I just kind of went up to him to kill him first, and then the Skeletal Warrior, not worried about it at all. Uh, those Icy Simulacrum guys, meh, not too worried. So, um, I just pulled them back. Anywho. Somebody opened this door. I'm just going to hold control. Um, oops, I'm sorry, shift. Huh, I thought I could close the door. Oh, no, you need to push... I thought it was Control-C to close the door. I'm not trying to swing. Um, oops. Huh. Oh, no. Yeah, okay, it's Shift-C to close the door. All right. Yeah, there you go. Thanks, man. I swear you used to be able to do something with the directional keys to close the door. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Thank you for that. Um, El has pointed out the key, he, keyboard command. It's Shift C and Shift O to close and open. Yeah, exactly. And that's a great point that El has is bringing up, and it's why I was closing that door. Um, that's an example of me not explaining. There's lots of enemies that like don't have hands or that just can't open doors, and so if you close just a wooden door, they're stuck in there. Um, and so uh, it's worthwhile to just close doors. Um, if you think there's something out there. Now, on the flip side, it takes a, a turn to open the door if you're running away. So, you know, think about that as well. All right, so we found a staircase. So I'm just going to go back up and I'm going to auto explore to make sure that there's nothing, there's no funny business on this floor. And I want to see if there's treasure. Um, and then I believe what I'm going to do is, yeah, see, look at this scenario. It's actually not that hard. Um, but we got a free fan of Gales. So I was going to um, buy, like, consider buying that for 680, but no, I got my own. Um, and let's just refresh our memory on what this does. It um, unleashes a powerful blast of rend around the bearer. Okay, so this is something like I was talking about before with positional crap. There are enemies that can, like, blast wind at you and knock you around, or elephants can, like, charge into you and knock you around, and they can move you off of the square you want to be on and just mess mess you up in terms of taking away your favorable position. But this fan of gales I can use as an escape method. I can use it to, like, um, do damage, but more importantly, just knock people away from me if it works, and give me some breathing room so that I can disengage in combat and run. So we will be holding on to this. Now, let me check out these gloves. Um, they're, wow. Um, they are uh, gloves of strength. So these give me plus three strength, which is awesome. So I'm gonna drop these regular gloves and just luxuriate in the fact that I'm now super strong. Um, Actually, let me um, 
step here for a second. I'm going to just do a demonstration. Oh, no, I'm not. Nope, I'm not going to keep disrobing. Um, capital N for no. And I need to kill this thing fast. Okay, so this is a Ogre Mage, all right? Ogre Mage um, is annoying because she's... Mages in general are just annoying, but she can confuse me, which sucks. She can cast slow on me, which I don't want. And then she can go invisible and be hasting other people while I can't see her. So she's got to go. I feel like she used to be able to send me to the abyss. Um, maybe I'm wrong about that, but she doesn't do that now. Maybe it's like Ogre Shaman or I'm thinking of some other caster guy. Anyway, um, let me try this out again. Yeah, okay, so check this out. My strength is 24. And if I put on these gl gloves of plus 3 strength, it goes up to 27. My armor class actually goes up 2. Um, because strength impacts uh, your ability to use heavy-ass armor. And I'm wearing crystal plate, which is the heaviest armor in the game. So by making myself stronger, I am... I can wear the crystal plate armor better and get more benefit from its protection. So I'm sitting here with 14 evade, 26 shield, 33 armor class. That is pretty nice and big ass dexterity and strength too. And then having an intelligence this high as a dumb minotaur is fantastic. It also, it almost puts me in the position where if I maxed out you know, my armor and some of my other things, I could consider getting some really, really low-level spells that would benefit me. Um, probably not, but, you know, if I wanted to. Okay, so let's check out Vaults 2 then for a bit. Oh, okay, Flayed Ghost. All right, so the Flayed Ghost is a prick because he does um, this attack that, temp that like doesn't really take your hit points away, but takes your hit points away. Um, he didn't do it to me. He died, but they're not so bad one-on-one, -on -one, but if you get a bunch of guys that can flay you um, around you with just regular enemies to hit you, you can die quite rapidly. Um, oh, look at you, Stone Giant, just catching your own boulder in the face. I love it. Okay. Um, oh, there is the, uh, what is it, the crypt? All right, so let's just go heroic and chop these guys up. Ogres, besides the mages at this point, even a two-headed ogre, I'm not concerned about. Now, this is concerning, all right, because, um, we have a deep elf sorcerer here. We have two deep elf mages, we have a regular elf, and we have a, um the guardian guy um and so we need to step back immediately we need to go heroic and we'll just wait until one of these guys comes around the corner okay so uh the iron heart preserver luckily came in first so that he can't defend any of these other people i'll just kill both of these guys i'm gonna step in even though it puts me in a really like precarious spot with people could fill in but against mages, you need to get on them as fast as you can, and I'll be able to slash and just hit them all. So they tried to summon stuff, but I could just kill them before the summons could even get to me, and they were just summoning spiders anyway, which aren't that scary to me at this point. Okay, what do we got here? Deep troll skeletons? All right, let's take them down. Gonna be a lot of undead here because this is a undead branch of the dungeon. Um, all right, let's just chop through them and it's the crypt okay so um the crypt is a thing that we could do uh it doesn't have a rune in it itself but i believe it's has uh the entry point to the tomb inside which does have a rune um now the tomb is similar to the slime pits in that it's one of the hardest places in the game um and so I don't like to go in there. I usually save that for almost last in a 15 room run. Yes! Yes! 
Okawaru gave me a shield. It looks like a large shield, too. God, we've been meet, needing to get that. Oh, it's St. Roka. Okay. Um, I got into the habit of holding down tab, and I'm on St. Roka here. So let me remind myself, St. Roka is good. Um, she's extremely dangerous. She can smite, yeah, which is my bane. Um, but I've got her down really, really far, so let's just kill her before she does anything funny and let's pick up this shiny large shield man a enchanted large shield that is a outrageously good pickup god we needed that so badly at this point so let me um see how good this shield is now it's gonna have some stiff competition because i have a plus five medium shield but um oh man look at this plus two large shield of positive energy that is so good it's so good to get um resistance brands on stuff that's not jewelry sometimes you know um just to ensure that i have i mean i'm gonna wear this all day long i've been saving this scroll of enchant armor just for this large shield and look at me now um my evade did go down a tick let's just do a um a comparison here okay so if i'm wearing this plus five medium shield my armor class is 33 my evade is 14 and my shield is 27 if i take it off and put on this big old large shield um my armor class stays the same my evade goes down but my shields go up by four right um and um i can enchant this up to plus eight instead of the plus five cap that's on the medium shield now um unfortunately you need to have a 25 shield skill to remove the penalty from a large shield because it's so freaking big and cumbersome but it's still so worth it um to keep this and i get the benefit of negative energy so now i'm a two out of three on negative energy with just the equipment i have the only thing i'm really missing is resist corrosion resist cold um i have the ring of sea invisible if i have to have it so that is tremendous again it's just um yeah exactly um elhaz is pointing out that uh the negative energy is so crucial in the crypt um you need two i like to have two out of three for the crypt and three out of three for the freaking tomb um and so i'm i'm really getting there i have a ring of uh, positive energy if I wanted to throw that on just to complete it. Um, so, really, really good. Really, really good stuff here. I'm going to drop this plus five shield. Don't need that ever again. Um, I'm going to use this scroll of enchant armor on my um, large shield and raise my shield. Remember, just my little spiel on enchant armor scrolls. If you're going shield, which I you know, just think is so good in this game uh, because the defense it affords is priceless. If you're a melee person, use your Scrolls of Enchant armor on your shield first before you use it on um, armor unless you have a piece of armor that has its magical with some brands on it that you know you're going to be keeping around for a while. But because basically raising one point of armor class is not equal to raising up one point of shields. One point of shields is insane. Let me actually um, just iterate why that's the point. All right, so if I look at shields, okay, um, you can block physical attacks and some magical attacks entirely, all right? Um, and so... It allows you to completely negate physical attacks. Okay, completely negate. And some magical attacks. Um, let's see. Let's see if, if I can find the calculations. Okay, so... Um, nah, it's going to re require me to actually look at it a little bit more. But anyway... Um, before I could give you a really cool breakdown of how that equates into block frequency. All right, that was an Entropy Weaver that I needed to kill immediately, and I did because I have an axe. Um, I got killed last run on Vault 2 with a very, very strong character 
by two entropy weavers who corrupted me to hell and back. Luckily, um, those dudes didn't corrupt, or that one guy didn't corrupt me at all, so it wasn't a, a concern. But entropy weavers are one of those things you have to watch out for. I had resist corruption, but I was too stupid to put the ring on to have it. And I forgot what how bad corruption was. I was under the impression it was um, just armor, but it c corrodes your weapon as well, which means I was basically trying to swing at these guys with like a toothpick, and they completely annihilated me. All right, so I got a bunch of good wands here. Just looking at them. Um... Okay. I'm going to use this scroll of enchant weapons on my evening star. Just keep pumping that up so that if I do find a hydra, I will be able to chop it. Okay, here's a boggart. All right. Boggarts look silly. They're teeny and they, they're yellow with a little hat. Boggarts are complete assholes because they're summoning masters. All right. They have to die. Okay. He's already um, mumbling at me. Okay. He's already summoned crap. Okay. There's a whole bunch of boggards here. Uh-oh. Okay. Uh-oh. And they blink around. And so... Whew, okay. They gotta die. Because they start summoning stuff. And they start summoning really, really hard stuff. If you're ever wondering where all the summon things are um, coming from... Uh-oh. What the hell is this guy? Death Knight? What do you want about Death Knight? Um... Okay, he just does some... He's not bad. He has some annoying abilities, but... Um, like, necromantic abilities to hurt me. But I do have my resist negative energy too now, so... That severely limits what he's able to do. Whoa! Scroll of Acquirement, people. That is what I've been looking for as well. Man, this run is just... Going gangbusters. Okay, so... Um, I got a scroll of acquirement and a whole bunch of scrolls of identify, which is even also nice. So let me show you. Let's use a scroll of acquirement to talk about it. When you get a scroll of acquirement and they are um, the rarest scroll in the game, uh, if you get one, be careful with how you use it because it's awesome. But I'm going to use it, all right? And it tells you what item would you like to acquire, okay? Or what do you want? basically and you get to pick do you need a weapon no i don't need a weapon my artifact weapon is insane do i need a book no i'm not a spellcaster do i need armor maybe do i need a staff um nope evocable ah, i'm pretty good there uh food no i have plenty of food and gold i have a pretty decent amount what i want is jewelry all right because i would love to just back into some artifact piece of jewelry I have pretty decent stuff, but I want something good, okay? Um, and let's pick up this ring, and let's use one of our scrolls of Identify on it. And it happens to be an artifact ring, okay? Um, oof. Oof, it's awesome, okay? So, this ring gives me Resist Cold, which I did not have. Resist Corrode, which I did not have. Strength plus effing seven, which is stupid, okay? And then dex minus four, which is annoying, but worth it, 100% worth it for this character. Uh, my dex is 25, which is higher than I ever get it anyway. Um, so I'm gonna take off this ring of protection from magic and put this on, all right? It will lower my protection from magic, but I don't wanna take off my ring of plus six of dexterity right now. Um, well, actually, let's just see what happens if I do my evade and my shield skill go down um, if I take that off. And I believe dex also affects your ability to hit. So I'm just going to look at my character sheet. I have 3 out of 5 M MR. I'm going to take this off. 2 out of... Yeah. So I'm going to put on this insane artifact ring. Okay? And then look at me now. Now, I'm very, very well balanced on all of my resists. And um, I have a 34 strength. Yeah. Yeah, that's happening. Okay, so 
that is just a sick pickup. Sick pickup. All right. Um, so the only things I was really concerned about were getting a large shield. Okawaru came through. And a artifact uh, piece of jewelry. And then we just happened to luck into a scroll of requirement. And then use it on jewelry and luck into an artifact. Lots of luck involved. Okay. Um, all right. So... This is getting to be a situation that I'm not happy about. Lots of bad guys here. So I'm going to limit how many bad guys I see at once. And step back into this hallway. I'm going to go finesse. And I'm going to just murder those guys. All right. Okay. Man, I'm up to 154 hit points. Jesus. All right. Um... Minotaurs get 10% extra hit points too, so they're just so stout. Alright. Um, let me look at my skills and see if I want to change anything here. Nah, I could turn off evocations at this point. I actually am. I'm going to turn off evocations and just start double training shields um, because I don't really want to have a penalty from wearing shields anymore. Actually, let me look at this. Okay. Well. Anyway, I think my strength and my armor skill are making it so I'm not suffering from my crystalline plate. But I want to get my shield skill up to 25 so I remove the um, chance that my shield will prevent me from attacking. And it'll just raise my shield skill even more. Which is bananas. It's already bananas. Okay. So that is the end of Vaults 2, people. So let's take a look. Let's take a gander. What do I want to improve? Um, at this point, I would like to improve um, my cloak. I have Guardian Spirit, but it provides no armor. So I'd like a cloak with some positive brand on it, some kind of resist or something that I could give some armor on. Um, I'd like to put my pair of gloves of strength plus three up with some armor. Um, I'd like to max out my large shield with armor. But other than that, I don't know. This is, this is going so well. I am very, very... You know, knock on wood, pleased with the progress we made. We got a rune tonight. We got an artifact ring with, um, you know, three positive properties on it. Uh, three of which we use heavily. We got a large shield to resist negative energy. Just, and a pair of strength gloves. Um, very, very nice run. So, or nice progress for the evening. So I'm going to stop here and um, save the game and uh, go to sleep. But everybody, awesome to have you here. Thank you for coming. Thank you for chatting. Um, I'll be back on tomorrow to pick up where I left off playing some more Dungeon Crawl. So if you feel like coming and checking out some Dungeon Crawl, please check me out tomorrow uh, on Twitch. Um, all of the videos are up on YouTube if you want to watch them. And... All of the VODs go to Twitch, but Twitch, like, removes them after a while. Um, they, they wear out or something like that. So, um, just be aware of that. But I put everything up on YouTube anyway. So, everybody, have a great night. Peace.